What's up, everybody, at FullOnDrum.com land. We are here with Bob Heil from Heil Sound. If you've seen any of the stuff from Ultimate Rhythm Studio episodes, you know that I'm a big fan of the PR30 and the PR40, and he's going to show us a few new things today. Bob, what you got cooking? Hey, nice to see you. Nice to be here, and greetings to everybody. Well, we're at NAMM, of course, the uh, great uh, showcase of whatever. The circus that it That's is. That's right. But uh, we always come here. I've been, my first NAMM was 1959. I was a demonstrator for Hammond Organ, because I'm an organist, theater organ, not church organ, a theater organist. And I was a, I worked at the at the booth for them. It was fun. Wow. Yeah. I thought my 16 NAMs was oppressive. Uh, no. But I, a uh, uh, lot of history. We're the only manufacturer in this whole building in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Why did we get there? How did we get there? It's because of what... What we did out on the road in the early days, there's some great pictures back here of some of the old things we did, but I was with The Who for many years, The Grateful Dead, Leslie West, Peter Frampton, Joe Walsh, all these great groups of the 60s and 70s, and I did their sound because we had the first big live sound system, and that's what got me there. But the whole thing's based on ham radio. That's how I know how to do this, right. building things, making it happen. Well, my... My best friend's Joe Walsh of the Eagles. He's a ham radio operator also. And we invented the talk box. We invented the talk box together for Rocky Mountain Way back in the late 60s. Really? And then I, I put it into production and I gave one to Peter Frampton for a Christmas present. And you can write the rest of that his, as well as Bon Jovi and, it, you know, Slash yeah. and everybody else that's using it. But anyway, it started with two ham radio operators, Walsh and Heil. And th about eight years ago... I, uh, since 1980, we've been building ham radio gear, headsets, microphones for that specific frequency response right. for first responders to get through to the hospital or wherever and disasters or just hams talking around the world. Right. So we're really big into articulation. The difference between an F and an S, a P and a B went way back into the Bell Lab studies and, and learned how our ears work. And it just seems like everywhere else in this building, they forgot about that. I mean, that's this really important articulation. Uh -huh. oh, Especially when it comes to drums and things like that, you have to have it. Yeah, fix it in your EQ. No! How about doing it at the microphone so you don't... I knew I was going to love this guy. Well, Walsh, about eight years ago, he says, come up here, I want to talk to you. So I go to his kitchen, we're sitting down. He's got one of my ham radio mics, and he says, put an XLR in this, I want to use it. I said, for what? He says, well, we're going out with a new group, and I, I just I don't like my ball mic. It doesn't sound good. It sound like I got a blanket over it. Your, uh, hand, your uh, ham, ham radio microphone, the gold line, has articulation. He says, I don't have to EQ it. Well, I hadn't looked back. When I left in 1980, the market, I, I didn't look back. So we started playing. And what I discovered was, oh, I come unglued. It's like, what happened to all this beautiful stuff we had in the 60s and 70s? Well, the only thing that's driven sales for all these other companies is ego and habit. You just grab it because it's habit. What happened to performance? Mm -hmm. What happened to performance that their founders brought to us? Right. They don't talk about it anymore. Nope. It's habit and ego. Well, we changed that. And we've got performance, and we, we've done it in, in a unique way. I'm very blessed that these guys are friends of mine all these you years. You always have designed mics with artists in mind and the sound they're going for. The drum, I don't, Danny Carey, and Walsh, yeah, and all that. I don't right? design them. The artists do. But I play with them, and they go, no, we don't like that. Yeah, we like that. Ooh, that's getting closer. Let's do this. They're the ones. It's not about the engineer in a white coat in a lab. It's about the guy that has to play in front of 10,000 people every night and the damn microphone sounds like crap. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yes, you totally can't agree. argue it's with that. It's all from here. Right. But I am so blessed that the other companies, they don't have this freedom to come on their stages with their scopes and generators and analyzers and sit behind a drummer night after night and what are we doing here? Because they know something's going to happen. When Heil shows up with his soldering iron, something is going to happen. And speaking of drums, you've got some really cool drum mics. Well, I, w I had 
we came out with, with the PR-20 and then the PR-35. We've got hundreds of vocalists, Carrie Underwood, Charlie Daniels, Stevie Wonder, all these many people that have tossed all their ball mics for the PR-35, the absolute best vocal mic ever. It really is. Uh -huh. Well, all the guys are saying, the drummers are saying, won't you build me a microphone? So I went out for a couple of years with six drummers, Danny Carey, Wally Ingram when he was out with Cheryl, uh, Aaron Harris with Isis, okay. uh, a jazz drummer from Pittsburgh, the, and, and, and that's a whole genre. Well, it just turned into a wonderful, wonderful, exciting so, thing. So what mics came out of those experiences? Well, the PR-48 kick drum mic. We found out from all of the, the times that we would measure everything, all of the bass kick drums have pretty much the same resonance, 50 to 100. And then we got a beater out here between 4 and 6K. Right. So we come, I built a, a passive high-pass filter. This was tough, but I did it. We come up at 50 cycles at 10 decibel. That's a lot. Holy crap, that is a lot. And it comes back down at 100, stays out to 4K, comes back up about 4 just for the beater. Just for some attack. Just for the beater. Which mic that is over there? Big dog. One of the things that we did, and Walsh and I, he, he said, you got to build me a big microphone. And so we built the big diaphragm. No one has ever done that. It's all, you look at your dynamic mics. They're all little right, pins on it. How well, big is this sucker? This is an inch and a half. And we figured two hams, man. We figured out how to tame this baby. Wow, look and, at that. And we put it in a, in a sorbethane and a vulcanized shock mount. The, the filters are all in here, and it, it, it's just a marvelous piece of engineering. It's not just another bass drum mic. No, I see, not at all. Well, the thing is, there's only one company building all of them. They put their name on it, and it's sad. It's really sad. But that's what we have to live with. Well, not anymore. There's a new sheriff in town. And you've built a Tom mic based on the similar concept, correct? Well, that was a good one. <laughs> but after we had some of the diaphragms and all that done, I'd put them in all kinds of handles and stuff to take them out on the road. Danny Carey, he's, you know, he's six foot seven. <laughs> yeah. Get out of the way when he wants to hit a tom-tom. Oh, yeah. tom. He says, you got to shock mount the heck out of that for me, you know. And I said, okay. So we did this really cool thing with the, once we had the, the diaphragm going, I shock mounted the element really well. But in, in my inevitable style, I didn't quit there. I shock mounted the shock mount. So you could, if you were mounting these on like a claw or some sort of rims mount on the side of the drum, you were also, this is going to eliminate any of the residual noise we, you get from yeah. the drums just vibrating. Right, because right? we're really shocked. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. That's another side of it. The jazz drummer I told you about, yeah. Hunter Herman, another genre, but he agreed with everything we were doing, but then we come up to the mount. And I had just had a little, you, I don't know, you buy, I bought it one of the suppliers, just a little old Chinese mount. You know, you've seen a bunch of them. Yep. But the little thing about that long, and that's what we'd been using in our testing. And so I sent that, to the package, I'd send it around to all the guys. It would take a long time to do all this and get all their ideas. He said, hey, can I do something with this? He has a complete tool shop. It's his hobby. He's got mills, he's got lathes, he's got drill presses. So he came up with this idea where we can now, we lengthened it, and we can tilt it. Oh! So when we put the Tom mic on here, I like to say it's totally ambidextrous. You can put that baby anywhere you want. And that is cool. And it's like, why doesn't people think? It's simple. <laughs> yeah. And Hunter Herman came up with that idea. So we call it the HH1, Hunter Herman nice. 1. So you really do spend time working with the artists and the oh, people yeah. to design stuff that not only sounds good, for that represents you, but represents what they are going to sound like. One of the, now here's one of my favorites. Well, Charlie Daniels canceled a 30-year run with Sure. 30 years, he canceled it. Once he heard a PR35, that was it. 
The whole stage for the last three years has been our microphones. His sound engineer is Bob Workman. <laughs> Bob loves our stuff. And one day he called me a couple years ago. He said, hey, I, I, I don't want to offend you. And he's like real evasive. What, what are we talking about? What are we doing here? You, uh, whoa, are you throwing all your mics? No, no. But he said, what's in the bottom of a PR-30? And I said, nothing. He said, well, could I cut it in half? I'd like to get it. So I, I like to use it for toms because Pat McDonald has got a drum kit like this. Yep. We're talking Charlie Daniels, but still, he's an oh, incredible yeah. drummer. And I said, well, I've never thought about that, but there's a, a fixed plate in here, full plate, so nothing down here acoustically. So we did. This is exactly the same mic, the same sound, but now Not we can size. get it around places, under heads, because with 40 dB of rear, we don't hear a tom-tom six inches away. No, it's awesome. It's, a, it's great on it's a snare too with hi-hats next yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. This thing, phenomenal. Well, we call this the PR31BW for Bob Workman. I mean, it's his idea. I'm not taking the glory and the... Uh, Credit where credit is. That's due. right. In the box it comes in. It's got his picture on the back of that That's story I just told you. But anyway, that, this is what Bill's Heil sound. It always has from day one. Because when we were doing all the big systems for the bands back in the 60s and 70s, there were no blueprints. There, nobody had done this. There was no statue. You just did it. And sometimes it worked and sometimes, sometimes it, it did. didn't. But that was rock and roll in the 60s and 70s. Yep. And today, oh my gosh! That's what made it unique. Oh my gosh! You couldn't, you can't change anything from where you stand on the stage and how you hold your mouth and what you do. Come on, man! If you live back in the '60s and '70s, it was so much fun because we yep. didn't give a crap. Exactly. We just had a lot of fun and we made good music. Yep. And that's all we were supposed to do. Bob, I would like to thank you for taking the time out with us today. You are proof that passion and innovation is not dead. No, no, no. And please don't stop because I love your microphones. Thank you. All right. Bob Heil, Heil Sound. You guys need to check some of these things out and go look at some of the past episodes from Full on Drums because we have PR 30s and PR 40s all over those episodes, everybody. Bob, okay. thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good show. See you guys soon. <laughs>